Perspective is a graphic projection of three-dimensional objects on a flat surface that resembles the way they are perceived by the human eye. In the fine arts, perspective is how an object, or composition of objects, is depicted in two dimensions to create the illusion of space. Basically, the types of perspectives are determined according to the point of view and the connection between the viewer and the object. Initial attempts to create the illusion of depth were made in ancient times, long before the vanishing point was defined. The first to master perspective was the Italian Renaissance architect Filippo Brunelleschi, who developed a view of perspective to a vanishing point in the early 15th century. His discovery immediately influenced the subsequent Renaissance art and was studied simultaneously in manuscripts by Leon Battista Alberti, Piero della Francesca, and others. It is generally believed that systematic attempts to develop a system of perspective began around the 5th century BC. The earliest paintings and drawings usually sized many objects and characters hierarchically according to their spiritual or thematic importance. The most important figures are often shown as the tallest in the composition. Hierarchical depiction develops the so-called vertical perspective, common in the art of ancient Egypt, where a group of closer figures is shown under a larger figure. Subsequently, overlapping of the figures began to be used to achieve the illusion of distance between them. In the art of more advanced civilizations, there is even a sloping shortening of the round elements in the image. In ancient Greek red figure pottery, for example, we can see the flattening of simpler geometric shapes such as shields or chariot wheels. Another field of study of perspective was theatrical productions. The ancient Greeks used scaled down or very exaggerated sets located on the stage to emphasize the greatness of the main characters and to create a scale of the stage. Another curious trick was to tilt some of the sets to compensate for the angle at which the performance was observed. I remind you that such performances took place in amphitheater halls where the audience sat on benches high above the actors, which forced the audience to watch the scene from a perspective. Chinese artists used oblique projection from the 1st or 2nd century to the 18th century. It is not certain how they started using the technique. It is speculated that the Chinese acquired the equipment from India, which acquired it from ancient Rome. Various paintings and drawings from the Middle Ages show amateur attempts at projections of objects, where parallel lines are successfully represented in isometric projection, or by non-parallel ones without a vanishing point. In later periods of antiquity, artists were aware that distant objects could be shown smaller than close ones for greater realism. Some of the paintings found in the ruins of Pompeii show remarkable realism and perspective for their time. The rules of perspective applied in Western art were developed during the Renaissance in Florence, Italy, in the early 1400s. During the Renaissance, Filippo Brunelleschi conducted a series of experiments between 1415 and 1420, which involved making drawings of various Florentine buildings in proper perspective. Brunelleschi applied the new system of perspective to his paintings around 1425. During and after the Renaissance, artists, architects and mathematicians continued to study and refine the rules of perspective not only as mathematical dependence but also as a psychological and dramatic means of achieving or suggesting. Basically, the types of perspectives are determined according to the point of view and the connection between the viewer and the object. In some cases, however, there is also talk of a semantic perspective, a perspective's meaning that does not aim so much at the visual effect as the meaning of what is depicted. Linear perspective but it can also be found as point perspective. This is a perspective in which the size of the depicted object decreases in proportion to its proximity to the center point, imaginary center in infinity, and its distance from the point of view of the observer. In this way the viewer follows the illusion that he observes things in their natural form. This perspective leads to a sense of reality and three-dimensionality. The formation of the linear perspective as a science took place during the Renaissance. Architect Filippo Brunelleschi is often cited as her father. 
architect Leon Battista Alberti and artist Leonardo da Vinci, Albrecht Durer, Paolo Uccello, and Piero della Francesca played an important role in its creation and development. This perspective has many varieties, the definitions of which are controversial. In English terminology, the term three-point perspective is used. However, all this is not something different from the concept of real perspective but only clarifies its varieties. The most characteristic things in the linear perspective are that objects appear smaller with increasing distance from the observer and become subject to foreshortening, which means that the dimensions of the object in the line of sight appear shorter. Aerial perspective. It is based on simulating the layer of air that separates the viewer from the observed. The objects in the foreground are presented in brighter colors. The more distant they are, the more desaturated are the tones. The colors of the subject also become less vivid and shift to the background color. The aim is to hint at the air atmosphere and thus create the illusion of space. The method was used by Leonardo da Vinci in his sfumato, which is why the Renaissance genius is considered one of its inventors. From the 17th century onwards, the aerial perspective was widely used in Western European art. In developing and researching the various dependencies in this type of perspective, the amount of air pollution, the position of the sun, and the time of day are taken into account. Reducing everything to physics, aerial perspective could be explained as follows. To see an object from a person's eye would mean that it has reflected the light falling on it, as the rays of reflection reach the human eye. Of course, this transition of light rays is not uninterrupted. Between the source of the wave, the reflected object, and the human eye, they are subjected to a number of physical laws that change their intensity and wavelength, which determines exactly what kind of rays reach us. The longer the path of the rays through the atmosphere, the more significant are the changes in them. The shortest path of the rays is when the sun is at its zenith. Apart from the atmosphere, the sun's rays must also pass through the dust particles in the air, rain, if any, fog, etc. The more dust there is in the air, the fewer rays reach the eye. It all happens due to a phenomenon called scattering. For example, when we draw sunrise and sunset from the same place, when the sun is equidistant from the earth, its rays fall into the earth at the same angle and the intensity of light is the same, we will draw the sunset much more orange with a much more blurred background, because during sunset dust particles in the air are significantly more than in the morning. The reasons can be passing cars, walking people, and different types of activities that cause pollution and release of particles into the atmosphere. As a result, shorter wavelength colors like blue and violet get scattered out, leaving only the longer wavelength colors like yellow, orange, and red available to our eyes. Sunrises, on the other hand, have far less atmospheric dust to block different types of rays, and we can easily see blue and even purple hues in the sky. Clear visibility will help us to see in the distance much more crispy and with significantly less blur. Reverse Perspective Unlike the linear perspective, the reverse perspective has a conditional center, the vanishing point is in the center of the viewer, the distance in space from this point makes the object appear not smaller but larger. This is a reverse perspective in its pure form cannot be found in art and has only a conditional character. Many scholars define it as meaning or semantic perspective. It is typical of iconography, as a striking example is an icon Street George Kills the Dragon, where the lake from which the dragon is crawling is miniature, within the pictorial space, the dragon is larger, but the main part of the image is occupied by the horseman Street George, who is actually in the background. Complex Perspective Often the different varieties of the linear perspective, as well as the principles of the reversed, are combined. Combining them even becomes a principle when it comes to monumental painting. For example, in the frescoes in the Sistine Chapel, Michelangelo uses a technique in which the figures depicted at the top of the fresco are larger, proportionally, than those at the bottom. This is a method that makes the figures appear proportionate from the point of view of the observer. Going deeper into the science of perspective, the following terms are inevitable. Foreshortening is an important element in art when we depict an object in perspective. It is characterized by the fact that the object is depicted with a strong reduction of the parts distant from the viewer. 
Foreshortening is the visual effect or optical illusion that makes an object or distance look shorter than it actually is because they are at an angle to the viewer. In addition, the object is often not scaled evenly, the circle often appears as an ellipse, and the square may look like a trapezoid. Anamorphosis is a distorted projection that requires the viewer to take a certain point of view, to use special devices, or both, to see a recognizable image. Used in painting, photography, sculpture, art installation, toys, and film special effects. Anamorphosis has been used by artists to disguise parody, erotic and scatological scenes, and other hidden images from the casual viewer. Graffiti artists often resort to this technique to simulate three-dimensionality or scale their works. Tommaso Loretti, Leonardo da Vinci and Hans Holbein Jr. were among the first artists to use the anamorphic technique. The Ambassadors, circa 1533, by Hans Holbein the Younger is known for the prominent grey diagonal slash across the bottom of the frame which, when viewed from an acute angle, shows the image of a human skull. Sfumato Sfumato is a painting technique first used by Leonardo da Vinci. It is distinguished by layers of translucent layers of velatura varnish, shifting the contours of each subsequent layer. This gives the picture a special, blurred aerial perspective and greater background depth. Some of Leonardo's students, as well as other later artists, such as Correggio, also used this method. Put it between those two shapes and just sort of wiggle it just a little bit and you see how it softens that edge? That is fumato. That is the true definition of fumato. When the edges are softened and you can't actually see uh, where, one, where one shape ends and the other begins. If you liked the video, visit us again. Thank you for watching.